I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on complex numbers. In this video, we'll see how do we solve a system of equation in the domain of complex numbers. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Also, check our website for the latest updates. The question here is, Solve the following set of equations in the domain of complex numbers. The conjugate z minus i omega equals to phi and conjugate of omega plus i z equals to 4 plus i. So that is a system of equation given to you. You can say this is your equation number 1 and that is equation number 2. You need to solve these equations, mean find the value of z and omega. Well, you can begin by saying that omega is the complex number a plus bi. The conjugate will be what? a minus bi, correct? And z being the complex number c plus di, whose conjugate is going to be c minus di. So you can now pause the video, answer this question and then look into my suggestions. Now here are a few important things for us to understand before we get into the solution, correct? Okay, so first and foremost, let us say as we are writing all these terms, let's say z is a complex number, which is a plus, in our case, we have taken this as c plus di. So let me write down c plus di in that case, z bar is what? That is the conjugate, right? So this is the conjugate. So that is the benefit that is for the benefit of those who really don't understand or who want to reveal this concept of complex numbers. So in that case, it is c minus di. Correct. This is kind of very important to understand. Now, another thing which is important is in our equation one, what do you see? Equation 1, we have 5 on the right hand side. So it is 5 on the right hand side. So normally, if I say that there is a complex number, let me just use uh, u for example. If u equals to the conjugate of u, it means what? It means that it is it has only the real part. Do you understand? So that means it is only the real part of u, which is there. The imaginary part is zero, right? So you call this as a pure real number, right? So this is a pure real number. Is that clear to you? So, so in the first equation, since this is a pure real number, we can always say, that the conjugate and the number itself are exactly same, correct? Also remember that if you want to find the conjugate of, let us say, a plus b, in that case, it is equal to the conjugate of a plus the conjugate of b. So these are a few properties which you should remember before getting into the solution of this particular question. So I hope these properties give you a good review. And now you can pause the video and answer this question. Is that clear to you? Right? Okay. So now let's begin with the solution. Now here is the solution. We are given the two equations. The conjugate z minus i omega is equal to 5. And the conjugate of omega plus i z is equal to 4 minus i. So what we are going to do here is that now we understand this part is real, right? So it's, it's the real part. So we say pure real, correct? So that means the imaginary part is zero. That is why we get only five on the right hand side. It's the real part only, right? So imaginary part is zero. So in that particular case, we can say that the z minus i omega should be equal to the conjugate of z minus i omega. Is that clear to you? So that is 
the property which we are going to now use, right? So the conjugate of this is this. Perfect. Now, what is, so in the first case, what we did was our equation number one, and that is our equation number two. So we wrote equation number one as the conjugate, right? So this becomes now equation number three. So what we did here was that we took the conjugate of the left-hand side, right? So, so we use this property that A is equal to A bar for pure imaginary, pure real. Is that clear to you? And therefore, we got this particular equation which becomes z plus i conjugate of omega. Do you see that? Equals to phi. So both these are exactly same. Since on the right hand side, we have a real number phi. This is the critical part to understand before getting into the solution. And for the second, what did I do? For the second equation, I just multiplied by i, right? So this is times i. So just times i both the sides and then what you get is the equation shown here. So i times omega conjugate and i squared becomes minus 1 and so you get z equals to 4i plus 1 i square is minus 1. So minus and minus becomes plus 1. Is that clear to you? So that is how we got the second equation. Perfect. So now we have these two equations to work with. Let me call this equation as our equation number four. Now, if I add equation number three and four, that is, I'm adding three, equation number three with equation number four. So if I add them, in that case, Z components, they cancel away, right? So they, they will cancel away. And what we get on the left-hand side is two times I conjugate of omega and 5 plus 4i plus 1. Correct? Now, let's write down this complex number in terms of a minus bi, right? Because that's the conjugate, right? Omega is a plus bi. So, we know that the conjugate of omega is a minus bi. So, I just replaced this by a minus bi and the right side being 5 plus 1, 6 plus 4i. Now, Compare the real and the complex part, right? So now we'll equate real and complex parts. So when you equate these terms, expand and equate, you could divide by two first also both the sides and then equate but what i did was i first multiplied them with a minus bi 2i we get 2ai minus 2bi squared equals to 6 plus 4i i squared is negative 1 so we get 2ai plus 2b equals to 6 plus 4i equating the complex parts 2ai equals to 4i we get a equals to 2 and the real part 2b equals to 6 we get the value of b as 6. so we found what is one of our complex number? It is 2 plus 3i. So omega is 2 plus 3i. Is that clear to you? Let's subtract the equation. That is, we'll do equation 3, take away equation 4. Okay? So when you subtract, what do you get? You cancel away the other part, omega part, and you get 2z. So we get 2z equals to 5 minus 4i minus 1. Now z is c plus di. Expanding this, we get what? So from here, we get c plus di equals to 2 minus 2i. So we divide by 2 on both sides, right? And now we can get the value of c and d by equating the real and imaginary terms and we get the value of z as 2 plus 2 minus 2i since c is equal to 2 and d is equal to minus 2. Is that clear to you? So that is how we are going to solve this particular equation. I hope the steps are absolutely clear. Let's be uh, very clear about a couple of things. That is the properties. If the right hand side is real, then we have a pure 
real part, correct? In that case, the conjugate of a complex number is same as the complex number itself. And that helps us to solve this particular equation easily. I hope it makes sense. Feel free to write a comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.